Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here today to share my perspectives as a parent of a child with NBIA and how this has affected our lives. I also want to tell you why I'm so grateful for the work you do every day. Many of you already know my story, but for those of you who do not, it began in 1989 at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, when my daughter Kimberly was diagnosed at three and a half years with Hallervorden Spatz. That was the name for MBIA back then. Kimberly had been slowly losing skills since she was 14 months old, but no one knew why until the doctors there diagnosed her. There was little knowledge about the disease, no emotional support system for families, no community, and no researchers studying it. Mayo advised us to take Kimberly home and prepare ourselves to lose her soon. Three months after being diagnosed, she was no longer able to walk, chew food, or even lift her head up from the bed. It seemed like what the doctors had said was coming true already. We entered her in hospice, but she didn't die, unlike so many other children with NBIA, and I didn't give up on her. Like so many other parents, I put my faith in research and sought out anyone who would lend me an ear. I asked a world-renowned geneticist in 1993 when the gene for her disease would be found. He looked at me and said, that disease is so rare, it'll probably be another 50 years before they find the gene. I can still close my eyes and see him and hear that conversation. I can still feel the sadness that washed over me when he said those words. Finally, in 1996, I heard there was a researcher interested in our disease. My life changed. I started to have hope that there might be help for my daughter and others with NBIA after all. I met Dr. Susan Hay Flick from the Oregon Health and Science University, and together we started NBIA Disorders Association with her as the director of our scientific and medical advisory board. I bugged Dr. Stephen Groff at the um, Rare Disease Center at the National Institute of Health for about a year to, um, to give us a grant to have our very first scientific workshop on Hallervorden Spatz. He finally did, and in 2000, 35 researchers attended. They studied diseases similar to ours, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's or brain iron accumulation, uh, but it was a start. Uh, I clearly remember all of those researchers sitting in a room and knowing I'd help bring them there. Instead of being sad, I felt happy. And soon after that, the first MBI gene was discovered, eight years later, instead of the 50 years I had told, been told by that geneticist. And now here we are 20 years after that first symposium, having our seventh. And there are 158 here today from 26 countries, all interested in NBIA disorders. I want you to know that you have the power to save lives and to change them for the better. This symposium is testament to the fact that parents all over the world believe in your work and have hope in the future because of you. So much progress has been made, but so much more is still needed. We need all of you helping us to get effective treatments to the finish line. My daughter is still with us today at age 34, but many other parents haven't been as fortunate. I have met and often become good friends with parents of children and adults who have um, died from these devastating disorders. We need treatments. We need cures. We can't afford to lose another generation to NBIA. Together, we can stop these painful losses. Families are here to help you in any way we can. We want to be partners in this endeavor and support you. Every researcher working on NBIA is contributing to a piece of the puzzle. It may be a small piece, but still it is vital. I thank each and every one of you for your work, your interest in NBIA disorders, and the hope you give the NBIA patient community. We cannot solve this puzzle without you. Thanks. Hello and welcome everyone to the second day of the NBIA Symposium. My name is Markus Nielbock, and I am the co-chair of the German Patient Advocacy Association Hoffnungsbaum, which literally translated means Tree of Hope. I'm glad and excited to see so many scientists joining the virtual conference this week. And as a father of an eight-year-old girl who suffers from BPAN, I'm looking forward to today's talks on general mechanisms in MBIA 
and BPAM research. But before I hand over the stage to the moderator of the first session of today, please allow me to share a few remarks I find important. To me, this symposium is a fine example of, of how you, the scientists, and we, the patient representatives, combine our forces to fight those horrible diseases. From our perspective, we see firsthand how you decipher the biochemical processes that are responsible for the illnesses we face. This allows us to follow up on the progress being made in researching NBIA and its variants, which in turn gives many of us hope that we can make a difference. But this connection is also important for many of you, as you realize that your work matters beyond the science that fascinates you, which contributes to your motivation to push forward. Also, some of you benefit from funding provided by a strong international bond patient advocacy organizations. I'm convinced that without this strong connection, this symposium wouldn't have been possible. And I believe that our partnership makes us all stronger and is crucial to achieve our common goals. First, understand the diseases, and second, pave the way to treating them and in this way helping our loved ones. For BPAN, this means stopping the neurodegenerative process whose consequences we are all afraid of. So I'm really glad that finally, despite the adverse situation with the COVID-19 pandemic, we can hold this symposium and provide a stage to the scientists to exchange their recent results. Now, without further ado, I would like to hand over to the moderator of the first session of today, Please welcome Agnes Rötig from the Institut Maladie Génétique in Paris. I wish you all a great and fruitful day. Hello to, the, uh, to all the NBAA community, their professors, scientists, uh, clinicals. Uh, representatives of uh, patients uh, associations, uh, they are conference organizers and all participants. My name is Maciej Cwil I, and I represented uh, NBAA Poland, the youngest association in the International NBAA Alliance uh, Group. Uh, I heard about NBAA diseases uh, three years ago during uh, routine uh, A examination at my daughter Martina. We found changes in the optic nerve, then the diagnosis went very uh, quickly. First diagnosis with uh, Dr. Tomasz Miec, then genetic test in the center in Munich with Dr. Arcangela Yuzo, and we found impan. Uh, I'm a researcher at the Warsaw University of Technology. For this reason, I started looking for research centers and scientists who do research on these diseases. I remember my first contact with uh, Dr. Yuzo, the team of Professor Heiflik, um, and of course, uh, scientists in Poland, Dr. Kmiec, Dr. Skowrońska, Dr. Rachtan, and of course, with association in the Europe and USA. It was very important and uh, helpful in, uh, in that uh, time. The next step was to found association. The present slide shows only registered members in association. We know that um, it is about 50% of no NBAA patients in Poland. The members registered um, are changing rapidly, especially now uh, when we started our supplementation and diet program. Yes, we are a young association, but uh, we are now a large, uh, quite large association. Uh, there is no association in countries in the east of Poland, so we have a lot of questions about uh, membership from families in Russia, Ukraine, etc. and uh, other Central European um, countries. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, I'm a researcher, so I put special emphasis on cooperation with research centers. Mm, collect money for research is very important, but important is to create a patient database, organization, help, support of research and expert uh, meeting, participation in international grants, uh, IRARE in Poland, Nationality Science Center, Nationality Center of Research and Development, Medical Research uh, Agency, 
in my opinion, we should be more activity in international cooperation. Mm. Uh, as an example, uh, uh, is the last discussion about gene therapy. Today, uh, in our meeting, is or will be Professor Miguel Estevez from Ma uh, Massachusetts. Uh, we made uh, contact a few months ago about gene therapy at the AAV uh, impan viral vector. We met um, in one team with uh, scientists from Germany and Poland and association from Switzerland and Poland. Uh, Professor Miguel proposed a Polish team of neurosurgeons, uh, Professor Bankiewicz and Professor Zombek. They agreed to implant the VIR vector in the future, of course, into the brain. This team has uh, performed some spectacular uh, surgeons in neurodegenerative diseases. Professor Bankiewicz uh, in Poland and in uh, USA. Of course, associations don't have this level of money, but international grants in this field, uh, maybe in part of this research, has a chance of um, success. Mm -hmm. Most of you uh, know that NBAA Poland has engaged in the therapy program supplementation and diet. This program is based on the results of a large group of implant patients. Then we joined the group of PICAN and uh, BICAN patients. At this point, a big thanks to Dr. Marta Skowrenska and Dr. Joasia Rachtan, who developed and um, researched and uh, discovered some metabolic uh, abnormalities. Many thanks to Dr. Tomasz Kmieć, who joined to this program and for, this, uh, pos for his positive um, opinion about it. Uh, generally, we work with lipid uh, changes, oxidation and ATP energy transformation. Of course, the types will be published by our scientists. The um, association help in organization, offer co-financing and collect a large control group in this um, program. Uh, Next uh, activity uh, is on this slide. I would like to inform that NBA Poland Association has cooperation with Dr. Arcangela Yuzo and Dr. Anna Messias. Mm, there are uh, Arcangela, there are Anna. Many thanks for your kindness, commitments, and of course for your work sometimes of seven days in a week. I would you also like to, to thank the entire team in Germany and Poland. I see that the cooperation between these teams from Munich and Warsaw is very good. Members of these teams are uh, in these conferences. Someday we probably will answer for, um, for your uh, questions. Mm. Uh, I know I don't have time. Uh, Patty would suggest that I, I have only five minutes. Uh, on this slide, uh, uh, I try to uh, tell something about um, families. Um, this is some uh, natural benefits uh, from uh, association for, for families. Um, I will go to the to, to next slide. Uh, in this slide, I'm trying to say that the social side is very important. In Poland, we have the problem of patients scattered um, all over the country. We find new patients uh, all the time. The association should help in uh, contacts with doctors and uh, scientists. A large group of families only see the doctors. They don't know the genesis of seeking therapy. They don't understand scientific work. In this field, association is very um, important. Uh, finally, I will return to my um, daughter. Now she is 13 years old. She goes to normal school, rides a bike, plays tennis, etc. Et I think that early diagnosis and well choose supplementation and um, medicines improve condition uh, of children. I agree, of course, that gene therapy is the, is the future, but empath is a disease of the whole organism. And um, implant vector only to brain is not enough, in my opinion, of course. Central nervous system, weak muscle strength, optic nerve, heart, liver, and other organs. Uh, well, applied uh, enzyme therapy uh, can limit it or maybe eliminate negative um, effects on the whole organism. But you perfect know about you, uh, about uh, it. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, so maybe I uh, I, I try to to to, um, to get these five minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Welcome everybody to the last day of this symposium. Of course, thank you to the organizers. I know you guys worked really hard on this and I think it turned out great. Um, my name is Michelle and my son Landon is diagnosed with FON. So today is actually an exciting day for me because to my knowledge, it is the first time that a FON study is being discussed at a scientific meeting. So yeah, Landon was diagnosed with FON at age four in 2014. Uh, very quickly, I realized the importance of connecting within the NBIA research community, as well as with other NBIA families. And I think the first important step that I did take on my journey as a patient representative was attending this conference in 2014 in Streza, Italy. At that time, Landon was just diagnosed for a few months. I had felt very intimidated and completely overwhelmed, but I made some lasting research connections and I got to meet for the first time with the International NBA Alliance. And I am happy to say that I consider these people my lifelong friends. Um, but there was one thing that really stood out to me at this scientific conference and it still stands out to me today. And that is the fact that researchers acknowledge the important contributions that patient families can and do make to research. And I just wanted to point that out because I think it's important that we never lose sight of that, the important contributions that we families can make. Also as a patient representative, I wanted to just briefly touch on a few things I know we all know these things, but I think it's important to discuss these things because they are important that we never forget. All of this work, all of this research does at some stage transition back to families. And I think it's important that we as a collective group of patient representatives and researchers approach our work with an understanding and compassion for the desperate situation that families are in. And we should never forget that. I think it's important that we never forget how scared families are to lose their children or loved ones. And I think it's important that we always recognize how families constantly feel like they are running out of time. And I hope that we all can keep those things in the back of our minds as we continue to pursue for future NBIA research, as I'm sure we all will. I would love today to be able to define to you what it feels like to have a child with an NBIA disorder, but the best that I can do is share my experience. So my son Landon and his diagnosis of FON for me can be defined as a continuous grieving process. Initially, <clears throat> we grieve the child that we had hoped for and everything that we had hoped for our child <clears throat> excuse me. Also, we grieved for everything that we now realize that our child probably would never be able to do. And since then, every change, every <clears throat> sign of deterioration or lost ability restarts that grieving process. And as you can imagine, it's difficult to live in a constant state of grieving. <clears throat> excuse me. You may even think that that's very sad and that that's very hopeless. And to some degree, yes, it is, but it is research that gives us hope. It is the work that you guys are doing that gives us hope, hope for a treatment, hope for a cure. And more importantly, hope for a future where our children can live free from the constraints of NBIA. And lastly, I would just simply like to say thank you to all of the researchers for your hard work and dedication into NBIA. Thank you. <laughs>